Pastor Uweta Simankani, we pray that God be with him. He sees him through those who are joining us through other uh, platforms, Facebook, uh, YouTube. You are welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the theme for the week, it's God's family. Yesterday, the concentration was on our father. Uh, today, it is the day of missions. And uh, before we open with a word of prayer, uh, allow me to share a verse with you uh, from the book of Psalms, uh, from the book of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 50. And there I would want to read verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50, and there I would like to read verse 4, and it reads thus. Uh, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, uh, that I should know how to speak uh, a word in season to him who is weary. Uh, he awakens me morning by morning. Uh, he awakens my ear uh, to hear as the learned. So as today, it is a day of missions. As we go about there, may the good Lord grant us uh, the tongue of the learned so that we may be able to minister unto him who is weary as we go through the challenges and the difficulties of this life. Without any waste of time, uh, I would request that we request uh, Meli Rumo. Uh, Meli Rumo, if you are in the house, may I humbly request that you please unmute yourself and put us all uh, before the throne of the of the Most High. Meli Rumo. Melo Renly Rumo. I can see she's muted. She's unmuted. Uh, Melo Rumo, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Let's rather pray. <clears throat> Let's rather pray together, friends. Loving Father, we want to thank you once again this morning for the gift of life. We want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us to meet together once again throughout the four corners of this world. As we are meeting from different parts of the world, we pray, Father, that you see us through this morning. We pray in a very special way, Father, for your main servant, Pastor Weta Simanka, and we put him before you. You have used him in time of the past. You have used him in a very special way yesterday. Even this morning, Father, we remain hopeful and blessed, knowing that indeed as we prepare, as we put ourselves before you, you will also be able to use him once again in a very special way. We pray, Father, for your people who have joined us through YouTube, Facebook, even those who are here on Zoom. We pray, Father, for a special unction of the Holy Spirit. May you see us through. Above all else, Father, we pray that may you grant us peace. As we start the service, be with us. In Christ's name we pray, Lord. Amen. Uh, without any waste of time, Murti Weta Simankani is what Weta Simankani is one of our own. Uh, he studied his uh, theology from Australia, from Avondale, and uh, he is a full minister with full rights. Pastor, there are your people. We are here to listen to you as you minister unto us. God bless you. Welcome, Muruti. Thank you very much, Tabo Lechalamidwa. We appreciate the welcome. Good morning, beloved. Good morning, sons and daughters of the living God. Good morning, my brothers and my sisters in Jesus Christ. It is an honor to come together. The Bible says where two or more are gathered, could it be? that we today are not just gathered as human gatherings, that this council of gathering includes unseen beings, that it includes unseen forces. He says, where two or more are gathered, there I am also. And I believe next to each one of us is an angel, next to each one of us and in each one of us is also the Holy Spirit. I pray that as we deliver this message this morning, we will find encouragement for our hearts that as this week progresses, as you go to your workplace, in whatever it is that uh, you will be pursuing today, that it will be with the blessing and in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I want to draw this morning from the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. Open your Bibles with me or write down the text for reference later. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Allow me once again, this is a house of prayer. This is a gathering of prayer. So let me invite the Holy Spirit one more time. Father in heaven, speak to me, speak to us. And as we meditate upon your word, may this day be one that is founded upon the guidance, upon the encouragement, and upon the fortification of your Holy Spirit and of your word. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our message this morning is entitled, Adopted into the Family of God. Adoption, beloved, is a wonderful concept. As we look at people, we might have many assumptions about their lives, but uh, beyond the assumptions, not everyone has a family that they can call their own. Most of us are privileged to be able to have called someone daddy and we have called someone mom, but not everyone that we encounter in this life has had that same privilege. Not everyone has had a father or mother, has had brothers and sisters. The painful thing about this pandemic has been to know that some children have lost mothers and some have lost fathers. Motherless, fatherless children, often by losing parents, lose protection, they lose education, they lose financial security, they lose the comfort of knowing that they will have bread in the morning, food in the evening, clothes to wear, and shoes when these ones are now too small, that their school fees shall be paid, that their providers are gone when their fathers are gone, when their mothers are gone, their hospitals are gone. Uh, they also lose their first school. They lose their first church. Uh, they lose God-given authority figures who instruct them in love and who can tell them when they are wrong with grace and corrective mercy. Beloved, they lose those who must teach them the ways of life and the ways of the Lord. I want to submit that in losing a father and a mother, they lose so much more. Uh, they lose an institution in the loss of these persons. If there's an orphan in your life, someone that you know, uh, someone in and from your extended family, please consider adoption. You see, before the incipient and now rampant individualism resulting from Western values, Africans understood, instinctively understood in the social fabric of our communities that no child must be left behind. It is an African way uh, that we come to the fatherless and motherless and bring them in. Uh, this practice, beloved, can change the life of a child forever. And I wish to draw this morning uh, from two biblical stories. The first is the story of Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan and the grandson of King Saul. And the second is the story of Esther. And uh, these stories, I wish to draw two specific lessons. The first lesson is that adoption guarantees provision. Adoption guarantees a provision. And the second lesson is that adoption motivates purpose. Adoption motivates purpose. And so the first lesson, adoption guarantees provision. Listen, the story of Mephibosheth. Uh, Mephibosheth met life's greatest misfortunes. His grandfather, the king, is killed. His grandfather is a name by the name of Saul, King Saul at that time. He loses his grandfather, but not only his grandfather, also loses his father. Uh, 
Apparently, his father was a best friend to the incoming king. Uh, his father was Jonathan, and the incoming king is King David. He is only five at this time. Uh, and while he is escaping, his nest drops him and injures his feet, both his feet, making him lame for life. He loses all his inheritance from his father and also from his grandfather, the king. You see, he was meant to be one that has everything set because of this inheritance, because of this heritage, because of this lineage. But now having lost his father, having lost his grandfather, he loses his inheritance. But not only that, he also loses his mobility and his health. And he has indeed, as it were, lost it all. Until a day comes when the king calls him, uh, King David summons him. This was a day, beloved, that changed everything, that changed the future of this young man. Uh, king David sees the fear in uh, this young man, and he says to him, do not be afraid. I like those words. Do not be afraid, uh, David said to him, for I will surely, I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. Listen, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather's soul, King soul, and you will always Eat at my table, Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 7. In this day, his provisions were guaranteed. In this day, uh, King David headed for Mephibosheth to know that he would be treated not as a servant and not just as a citizen of the kingdom. He would be treated as a son. He gets the protection of a king's son. He gets the provisions of a king's son and even more, the inheritance inheritance of a king, the king's soul, his grandfather. He would get back the inheritance of land that had been lost. Oh, beloved, we too, like Mephibosheth, are orphans, and yet we have had a great inheritance that we have lost. Our grandfather Adam lost his way, and by losing his way, also lost inheritance uh, but beloved, God takes us in. Jesus becomes the second Adam and he brings us back from nothing next and makes us sons and daughters of the living God. And we today can, like David, know that we as Mephibosheth have access to the king's table. And we do not come as servants and as waiters just to serve others. Primarily, we come as sons to sit at the king's table together with the other children of the king. Oh, what a message, beloved. When we say, give us this day our daily bread, we are like Mephibosheth at the king's table, sitting there as sons, not as beggars. Sons receiving our daily provision at the king's table. We are not begging for bread. At the king's table, we are there as sons and daughters and beloved. It is a father's duty to provide bread for his children. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus elsewhere puts it a different way. He says, uh, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, shall be given unto you. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, Mephibosheth, come home, come home. What you need is simply to come into the household. And as a son of God, remember the prodigal when he arrived home, the father immediately calls the servants and he says, slaughter the fattened cow for my son has come home. When you arrive, the provisions are guaranteed. I will take care of you. Adoption, beloved, guarantees provision. And so when you pray, give us this day our daily bread, you are not begging. You're not begging the king to provide for you. You are simply coming to the table as a son and the father has a duty to provide. He knows that you need these things, just like a father and a mother know that we must buy uh, clothes, we must feed our children. 
it is a parental duty for our father in heaven to provide for us and so beloved we have a guarantee of provision in the household of faith but listen to this adoption also motivates purpose adoption motivates purpose in other words as we come we do not simply receive the guarantee of provision but we also have motivation to fulfill purposes uh, to fulfill the purpose and to accomplish and to achieve because we are now children of the king uh, we here come to the story of esther uh, the book of Esther presents to us a very interesting tale. We have there a girl who is adopted by her cousin Mordecai. And through his influence and through his guidance, Israel is preserved and the lineage of Christ is maintained. The story of Esther presents to you a, a hinge, it presents to you a link between God's ultimate plan of salvation, wherein it was almost completely interrupted when the life of Israel itself was threatened, but it was preserved because of one person, and that one person is the person by the name of Esther. But Esther did not accomplish what she accomplished simply on her own. She accomplished it because of the counsel, because of the education, because of the person of Mordecai. I want you to look at this. Adoption, beloved, changes the life of a child but it also changes the purpose and the mission of a child. And so it changes the lives of many others beyond that of the child. Uh, many others are saved when a child's life is saved. Listen to Mordecai speaking to his adopted daughter, if you will. He says to her, for if you remain silent, this is the time when there is a threat for all Israel to be taken away. And at this time, for those that may need a little introduction to the story, Esther has now been taken as, uh, as, uh, as a queen in the kingdom. And, and Mordecai speaks counsel to her, wisdom into her ear. This is what she says to her, if you remain silent, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. What words, what counsel? They say that most children are one adult away from success. And what a difference Mordecai makes in the words that he gives to Esther. Mordecai at this time was a wonderful counselor, a teacher, a shepherd to Esther. And she responds after listening to these wise words. She says, go, gather all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast and go to the king. Ah, and even though it is against the law, if I perish, I perish. What words that resound through the ages of time, words of courage. Esther at this time had gained courage and had grown a little strength, resolve and it was only not just her own courage from her heart, but it was influence from Mordecai who cared enough to give her encouragement. Beloved, when we are adopted into the family of God, our trajectory is changed forevermore. He does not just feed us, he also directs us. The father, you see, is a wonderful counselor, a great teacher. He is omniscient, full of wisdom. And in James, he says, does anyone lack wisdom? Let, it come, let him come to me. When you come to the father, he says, I will give wisdom up boundingly you may be discouraged today beloved but today the father says do not be silent do not retreat into despondency may the words that are spoken here come into your heart this morning there is still work 
for you to do. Who knows? You have come to your position. You have come to your situation. God has placed you right where he wants you for such a time as this. What will you be doing today? What position have you been given? What access have you been given? What influence have you been given? What uh, privileges do you have? Could it be that God has placed you where he has placed you for such a time as this. Esther, we are praying for you. There is an Esther here today. We are fasting here for you today. As we begin this morning, as you go to the office, go in courage, go in strength, Esther. Do your part. Stand up tall and shine bright like a diamond. Sparkle like gold. This is your time. Do not become a nobody. Do not fear uh, everybody. Whatever thy hand findeth to do, the Bible says, do with all your might. I give a little counsel. The word of God gives you a little counsel. You are a child of God to fulfill great purposes and accomplish great things for you are a child of the king. And he says to you, I have a purpose for you today to accomplish great things. Who knows what is in store for you? Don't simply shrink your life. Don't simply hide yourself, but get up and shine because God has a work to be done today. Esther, we are praying for you. Esther, we are rooting for you. Go forward today in Jesus' name. Could it be that you are an Esther for this time? That when the world is crumbling down, that in your little corner, when you shine, darkness shall fade away. Could it be that your presence in the office may be the trajectory and the salvation of your own uh, company? Could it be that your organization needs you? Could it be that the church needs you? Could it be that for such a time as this, you have been brought here? Esther, there is a purpose for you to fulfill. If you don't do it, the rocks shall cry out. If you don't do it, God shall find salvation from elsewhere. But that may mean that that is your own end. Esther, the word is coming to you today that God has placed you to fulfill divine and holy purpose. And so the two messages for today, number one in the family of God is guarantee of provision. You are not a beggar. You are not begging the father. He has a duty when you come into the household. So what's your first duty? Your first duty is to come. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Come into the family. Come back home. And when you are home, the father has a duty to take care of you. Provisions are guaranteed. But also when you come back into the household, a purpose is given to you. You are motivated to accomplish because now the father is the counselor, your father who knows it all, who has a plan for you for he says, I know the plans I have for you to prosper you, to give you hope in a future. That same one who utters those words is not just God, is not just the creator, he is also your father. And so there is a great destiny for you. You are anointed, set apart to accomplish great things in Jesus' name. Let us close our eyes as we pray. Father in heaven, we have much need, but we don't come begging today. Uh, for you know as a father what we need. We come as your children and we say, give us this day our daily bread. We say, you know our needs, provide for our needs, Father. We are seeking your kingdom first and may all these things be added unto us. Oh, Father, we are also praying that you may motivate someone today, that you may be Mordecai, that you may be the wonderful counselor to encourage and bring strength and zeal to somebody's life so that as we go into our different spaces we may go to accomplish and to excel to the glory of your name this is our prayer in jesus name we pray amen 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 and amen thank you so much moruti greatly appreciate it so speaking to us as different esters as we prepare to go to the prayer rooms may god see us through thank you so much god bless us all Brother Tabu, we are going to prayer rooms today. As you know, we have two people that will be praying for us. Uh, we will firstly ask uh, Sister Zenaford to pray for mission. We are not going to prayer rooms. Sister Zenaford and, and Brother Robert Amuka.
Sister Zenafot and Brother Thank Robert you. Amuka. Thank you. You can start, Sister Zena. Okay, I'm unmuted. Good morning, everybody. Let's bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> our merciful, loving, gracious Father, Lord, as we come to your throne of mercy this morning, it is with a humble heart, dear Father, a thankful heart, dear God, that the King of heavens, the King of kings, the creator of heaven and earth has chosen us mere mortals, dear Father, to be participants in this great work that you have put aside for us, dear Father God. Lord, you are a wonderful Father. You are the Lord God who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. And Lord, you have given us, your people, your co-workers, the ability, dear Father, the power, your grace, dear Father, to work hand in hand with you, dear Lord. You've called us, dear Father. We've heard today that we are the Esthers, dear Father, and sometimes we look at ourselves and we underestimate who we are, dear Father, and the power that lives within us. Today, dear God, may we have the courage of Jesus, dear Lord, as you call out to us, dear Father, and you may we realize that we have a purpose now and we have a mission, dear Father. And it might not take away the fear or the nervousness that we feel when we uh, consider that we need to go out, Father, and, and share your word. But dear Lord, may we have a trust and a faith in you, dear Lord, to know that as we go out, we don't go out alone, dear Lord. Your heavenly angels, cherubim and seraphim that excel in strength, your ministering angels that are there to assist us when we go out and do your work is waiting, Father, to be sent to assist us. May we call on them, dear God, as we go out today to be a blessing to your people, dear Father, Lord. We want to thank you for giving us the ability to strengthen the feeble knees, dear Father God, to know that we were called for a time such as this. Give us the wisdom, Father, and understanding that um, we may not uh, keep hold of uh, the fear because we weren't given a spirit of fear, Lord, but we were given a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So as we go out today, dear Father God, May we rise up and allow you to work in and through us, dear Father. And because you are within us, as we open our mouth wide, may you fully, dear Lord, may we know, dear Heavenly Father, that you will put the words in our mouth, dear Father, as you touch our lips. And um, may we realize, dear Heavenly Father, that there's a whole world that's waiting there, that's being allocated for us specifically to speak to, dear Father God. And if it's just one person, may we know that that's fine, dear Lord. We are called for a time such as this. As you said to Isaiah, you said, who will I send and who will go for me? That's, our, that's sent to us and asked of us, dear Lord. Who will I go today, Father? So may we take courage today and say, send me, Lord. May you send someone our way today, dear Father. Someone that we can share the love of God with. Even if we look at the times of old, no one, nowhere in your word, Father, did you say you first need to learn this and that in the Bible. No, you simply sent them forth and said, go and tell others of what I have done in your life. So may we today remember the goodness of God and what you've done in our lives, dear Father. And as we meet others, may we smile. May we be that light that you've called us to be, dear Father. And may you put the words in our mouth as we start the conversation to speak of the goodness of God, dear Father. And we will see wonderful things uh, unfold, dear Lord, as your Holy Spirit works in and through us. Holy Spirit, you are the only one that can allow us to do this for not by might nor by power, but only by your spirit. Please continue to pray with us and to be with us as we go throughout this day, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you and we thank you for being with us and filling us. Dear Lord, cover your children by your blood now and inspire them, encourage them, dear Father. And as they go out today, dear Lord, may they go with a new purpose and a new determination in their hearts to conquer, dear Father, to win souls for you, knowing that your end is very near dear lord and knowing that very soon we want to be with you in heaven we love you dear god fill us now and go before us in whatever we do today may we know and understand that we are not alone angels of heaven surround us so anoint our eyes give us that spiritual ointment dear father that we can see with the eyes of jesus and see people through your blood dear father 
and that they will experience and have an encounter with the God of heaven today through us, dear Lord. We trust you, dear God. Go before us. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Can we request Brother Amuka to lead us in prayer? Let's pray. Our Father and our God, what in heaven, our creator and our maker, the author and the finisher of our faith. It is another morning. It is another day. This is because of your power. Father, we come before your presence as sinful as we are, asking you to forgive us our sins. As we present our bodies before you, O oh Father, these are vessels that you created and we humbly ask you, Lord, that you may get hold of our hands, walk with us and lead us to where it pleases thee. We are angels. We are going to take the position of the angels in this world as we take the message out there. But this cannot happen if we cannot surrender ourselves into your hand. So Father, this morning we want to surrender ourselves into your hands, Lord, that you may forgive us our sins and accept us. Give us that power of the Holy Spirit that will help us to do at least one thing that will put a smile on your face, Lord. As we come before you this day, we want to kindly ask you that the message that we have received today is not only meant for us, those who are listening, but it's meant for those that may not be in a position to hear this or that. So Father, we ask you to give us the Holy Spirit that we may have the spirit of sharing, sharing the word of God and not only the word of God, O oh Lord, sharing even those that you've blessed us with in our homes and in our houses, oh Father. Give us the Holy Spirit, Lord, that as we listen to you, oh Father, we may know that there is no time that is left for humanity in this world. And so Father, the only thing that is left for us is to go out and share the good news with the people out there. Because you said the end will not come unless the whole world and the whole corner of the world receive the good news. So, Master, we are asking you this morning, give us your Holy Spirit. Take lead of us, get hold of our hands, walk with us to wherever we go, that we, whoever we brush our shoulders with your Father this morning and all the time of our lives may receive this good news that we have. Father God, we are asking you kindly that every morning, every moment, every time we receive any message, it is going to remind us that that message we need to take it out because we are acting in the position of the three angels message of earth. May you give us that zeal and that power that every moment that we come into this gathering, may we not come and go the way we came. Make a change into our lives, oh Father. And that change may also be felt among the people that we live with, among the people that we, we work with, among the people that we stay with. And so Father, this morning, we want to remember the sick and the bereaved at the same time. There are people who are mourning. There are people who are not having peace in mind. And Father, this, this moment, we want to put them into your hand. Send your holy angels, Father, Minister unto them and remind them that you are the God of the bereaved and the God of those that are uh, not having anyone to rely upon. Help us to rely upon you, O Lord, and above all, Father, bless this gathering. Let this gathering be a testimony in heaven that at least few or one will say that it's because of this gathering that they found themselves in heaven. Father God, we want to ask you to remember those that are leading us here. We want to put the man of God into your hand as he is going along the series that is arranged for us for this week. Continue to give him power. Continue to open up his mind and continue to use him according to your will. We ask you all this trusting and believing in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much uh, to the pastor. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Sister Zena Ford. Uh, thank you as well to Brother Ro uh, Robert Amuka uh, for blessing us in a very special way. Without any waste of time, we will have two prayers that will be shared uh, later during the day. One at 12 p.m. by Sister Ruthie in Yawasha. And then at six in the evening, we'll have Sister Betty Odera 
to also lead us in prayer. Let us remember to join the Telegram group uh, for the virtual prayer Telegram that is uh, ongoing. We want to thank everyone who has joined us for today. Let us meet again tomorrow. Do we have any visitors? Are there any in our midst who have joined us for the first time? If yes, uh, let us kindly raise our hands so that we can acknowledge.